How about a quick tour of Asia without leaving Mexico? One of the coolest things about Mexico City is its diversity. So today we're going to be exploring some of its Asian neighborhoods and hopefully speak to some Asian immigrants or some Mexican Asians and learn about their stories. Mexico as a country is known to be welcoming to immigrants. Mexico City is a global city and you can find people from all over the world here. And just like many other major cities, you'll find pockets of cultural neighborhoods like El Barrio Chino, Pequeño Seúl, and Little Tokyo. And during today's tour, of course, we're going to be trying food, so I hope you're hungry. <sighs> Also, throughout our little tour of Asia today, we're going to be testing out a new travel gadget, the Fluent Talk T1 Mini handheld translator. We're going to try to test it out and find some Japanese speakers, Chinese, Korean, but it is Mexico City. You never know how many languages we're going to run into. Let's see how many languages we can test this out with today. We've actually been to Asia before, but we went to Vietnam, Cambodia, and Thailand, and it was an amazing time. But our interaction with locals was very limited due to language barriers. Yes, and we do hope to make it back out to Asia someday, but before we do, it'll be interesting to test this baby out and see how good it works. Let's start today's tour in Koreatown. Pequeño Seúl is a hidden gem in Mexico City. During the 1990s, there was a wave of migration from Korea as a result of international commerce agreements between Mexico, Korea, and Taiwan. There are an estimated 10,000 Koreans living in Mexico City, with most living in the Zona Rosa neighborhood, which is located within Colonia Juarez. Zona Rosa is known for being LGBTQ friendly and for its vibrant nightlife. And now Zona Rosa and Pequeño Seúl overlap, so you'll find colorful streets with Korean style shops, bars, cafes, and restaurants. One of the restaurants we're checking out in Pequeño Seúl is called Pocha Rosa, which, what does pocha mean in Korean? Because pocha to Mexican Americans is usually a dirty word. Let's go find out. Pocha Rosa is a pub and coffee bar where you can get Korean style drinks, coffee, tea, and food. According to a random Google search, pocha is the word used to refer to Korean street food or market. I couldn't resist the opportunity to get something Asian-Mexican fusion and of course I went with a horchata boba tea. So this is the horchata rosa, it must be one of the house drinks. And then we went to the little store next door, we'll show you in a minute. And I got these snacks. I know that chips these days are mostly air, but man, this is exaggerated. I'm afraid to open it, I feel like it's gonna explode as soon as I open it. And Kevin takes one for the team, but no explosions. All good. Thank you. And they actually tasted shrimpy. I got me a soju carajillo coreano, another cool Mexican and Korean fusion. This thing looks delicious. Mm, I love fusions. Oh, they're so good. This is. While we look for Korean speakers to help us test out the translator, we're going to check out the store next door and test out one of its features. One of the cool things about this device is that it has a camera in the back, so we could actually check out the labels in Korean and translate them into English on the screen. So let's check this out. All right, let's try this cookie thing. Take a, so align with the reference line, which I think is that middle part right there. Yep, full of savory peanut cream. Oh, see, I would have thought that was hazelnut. I did not realize that was peanut. If I had a peanut allergy. That would be serious. Good to know. Thank you. What do you think of the Korean town in Mexico City? And how long have you been here? Your Spanish was really good like, earlier when we spoke. A ver, quiero ver qué dice. Mexico City es un lugar de la ciudad. え、ご飯は Let's see, let's see what he says. No, no, no. <laughs> That's it, I've been here for 16 years. Uh -huh. Mexico's very much better than I thought. Uh -huh. Good good to me, the food is just right, the people are just right. We get along, everything's good between us. 
Okay. Sí, está bien. ¿Qué tal la traducción? Está bien. Está good, bien. Good, good translation. Uh -huh, ok. Tu español también es muy bien, o sea, tú eres México-coreano. México, no, yo, coreano. Soy, yo me crié en Argentina. Te crías en Argentina, oh, con ah, razón, el acento ah, está un poquito diferente. Me crié en Argentina. Chido. Bueno, ¿Sí? muchísimas gracias. Ah, ok. Yo soy Jenny y tú eres... Daniel. Daniel, uh -huh. muchas gracias. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about this gadget, the Fluent Talk T1 Mini. We were able to test it out uh, with different languages, translating from English to Korean, Korean to Spanish, Spanish to Korean. And as far as using it, it offers, like you, you saw in the video, the voice translation, it offers text translation. You take quick pictures of the text and it'll translate it for you. Turning it on was fairly easy too. The first time you turn it on for the day, it might take two minutes or so, but then the rest of the day is just one click and a couple seconds away and clicking just the one button, it'll save your settings. So like we were using it last night from Korean to English, uh, from English to Spanish. It's, it's actually really impressive that without Wi-Fi, you can use this thing and you have access to like 36 languages and 88 accents. Uh, and speaking I, of no Wi-Fi, it actually comes with one year of free global data, so you can use it in the most remote of places, even in El Rancho de Mexico. Right? Yeah. Another cool feature is that even, if, let's say, after that one year of unlimited global data is up, you can purchase a package, connect to Wi-Fi, or you still have access to 13 offline language pairs. So uh, a couple challenges with the device um, was that when we were out and about using it, we were using it, I think, in like a loud environment and we were speaking very quickly. And so it wasn't picking up on everything that we were saying. Um, its accuracy is up to about 95%, which is still really, really good, impressive for something that you just speak yeah, into. Sure. Um, but where I, what I see this being most helpful, and even though we tried it in social situations, is an emergency situation. Yeah, like sure. imagine um, having only a basic level of a language like we're fluent in Spanish but if we're in China and we lost our passports and lost our phones and we need help getting to the nearest embassy that's exactly what I would use this for and, and I would be thankful to have something Or like in a situation like you arrive to the airport in Japan and your luggage is not there. Oh. <laughs> You know, How are you going to speak to the people at the airport? Yeah, this would, be, this would come in super handy in order to translate and try to get those mm -hmm. things. Fixed. So that's the cool thing about it is that it goes beyond like the social situations that we use it in, which was fun. Um, but really, this, this this comes in handy as a lifesaver in those challenging situations while you're traveling. Next stop, El Barrio Japonés, just across the road. While there isn't an officially marked Japanese neighborhood in Mexico City, at least not like Chinatown, which we'll see later, there is a street just north of Paseo de la Reforma near the Angel de Independencia that is lined up with Japanese-style restaurants and bars. And while we're now hoping to find a potential Japanese speaker to keep testing out the T1 Mini with, we're also going to indulge in some sushi and more soju. We chose this restaurant called Aburilla because just look at this ambiance. It looked like the perfect spot to feel like we're traveling in Japan. We actually eaten here before and decided to come back because we really did like it. We're gonna order a few of the things that we liked last time and try something new. And I see that they have Suggestions of the month, Japanese, Mexican suggestions. So I'm excited, maybe we'll try one of these. Comida criolla mexico japonesa. Mexican Japanese Creole food. Like where else do you find fun combos like this? The restaurant recommended the sake sponge cocktail, which is sake of course, white wine, some Sprite, some citrus, and raspberries. It's sweet just at the top because of the sugar, but down here it's so refreshing. Oh my god. My understanding in the Japanese concept, I mean, I don't know anything about this, but is that sake and citrus flavors are meant to prep your palate for the delicious food we're about to eat. So if that's true, this thing does the trick. They have a variety of Korean and Japanese imported drinks. You got some bubble tea, you got some Korean rice wine. Oh, this is the one we tried last time. This is really good. I think we should get another one. We've got peach flavor, yogurt flavor. Oh, look. Is that Yakult? It's Yakult, right? <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh, this is coffee flavor. Man, 
most of these I've, I've never tried before, but they all seem really interesting. What a cool way to come and explore Korean and, and Japanese and eight different Asian communities. Wait, Chupa Chups? That's Mexican. Chupa Chups is Mexican, right? All oh, right, all right, we're in Mexico. Duh. This is something we had last time that we loved and had to order again. It's the yakitori de res, the beef yakitori. Mm. And with the grilled veggies. This is so, so good. Here we got a Mexican Japanese sushi roll fusion. It's a carnitas de Michoacán con aguacate and some delicious looking salsa matcha. I'm not sure Japanese would consider this sushi, but fusions make the best food sometimes. Mm. How are the carnitas? Yeah. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Sitting in front of the chef was a great decision because we got to watch him work his magic all night and make great conversation. Then we ordered more soju and our favorite sushi roll at this place. So we asked for our favorite roll here, which is the Magura Aurilla. It's a tuna roll with surimi, avocado, tuna on top, bathed in eel sauce, which we really like eel sauce, and a spicy mayo. That's hard for to throw in a seared tuna roll. Mm. Mm. That seared tuna taste is delicious. Ed, ¿Qué opina del barrio coreano y el barrio japonés aquí en México? Pero quiero que me responda en coreano, porque usted es coreano, ¿cierto? ¿De dónde es usted? Espere, escuche, escuche. Listo. Coreano o español? En coreano. Pero aquí. Ay, no. Ah, no, no. Ya no, ya se le olvidó el coreano. Sí, es que ella ya es mexicana. ¿Cuánto tiempo vive usted aquí en la Ciudad de México? 17 años. 17 años. Ahora ya estoy viviendo en Mérida. Ah, entonces ya eres más mexicano que coreano. I would like to learn more about you. I heard you speaking Spanish, but I also understand that you're Japanese. Can you tell me where you were born and raised? Okay, let's see what he said. It's speaking, it's hablando Japanese. For some reason, the translator responded to me in Japanese. I may have pressed something accidentally. But we had some great conversation with Hugo anyway and learned that he is a third generation Japanese Mexican and that his grandmother moved to Mexico many years ago. Vengan a disfrutar la cocina japonesa criolla en Aburilla. Come and enjoy Japanese cuisine. Let it be boring. No, that's wrong. <laughs> Aburilla. It's a Japanese word. That's why I didn't catch it. It was so nice to meet the owner of Aburilla. Thank you so much. What's your name again? Hugo. Hugo. Muchas gracias, Hugo. Que tengas buena noche. When did you ever imagine meeting three Asian Mexican men named Hugo, Fabian, and Miguel? Never. Never in my life. And, but one, that of was them awesome. being, and one of them being the owners of the restaurant. I know. Which is, yeah. We thought we're going to ask this random stranger eating at the restaurant. I, I love, Turns out to be the owner. Honestly, I, I, it makes the food even so much better because they're so humble and so nice to us. They're like, yo, next time you come, order this. It's like off the menu. Thank you so much, Hugo. We really appreciate it. Yes, you guys, check definitely check out his restaurant. He's got two locations. It's called Aburilla. Aburilla, one here in the Colonia Cuauhtémoc and the other one in Satellite. Last stop on our tour of Asia, El Barrio Chino. 
This is the largest and most established Asian neighborhood in Mexico City, nestled right within Centro Historico. The Chinese people have a long history of immigration to Mexico. Some came with the famous Manila galleon trade, which connected Acapulco to the Philippine Islands for about 250 years. Then, waves of Chinese immigration brought workers and labor from both the United States and mainland China. Long story short, there is now a thriving Chinese community in Mexico City. ¿Acaso alguno de ustedes habla chino? No, no, no. Sí, los sabores muy mexicanos, dubalín, rompope, fresas con crema. ¿Y cómo, cómo les cayó la idea? O sea, esta tradición viene pues de los chinos, ¿verdad? ¿Cómo? Sí, sí, es de los chinos. Nosotros nada más le cambiamos unas pequeñas palabras a la, a la receta. A ver. ¿Qué le damos, reina? Check this out. These are called baobons, I believe. A staple. Asian treats found right here in Mexico City's Chinatown and I got the most Mexican flavor I could pick out which was a rompope or eggnog flavor. The duvalin one sounded pretty good too. It's you know my one of my childhood candies. Oh my gosh. Look at this. All right. I'll let you know how this is. Oh yeah, this is dessert. This is dessert. I don't know how Chinese Chinese this is, but it's pretty good. It's been a fun day of Asian fusions. How did you learn to make these Chinese buns and where did you get the idea for this business? Eh, aprendimos eh, con unos amigos que son chinos. Eh, tomamos la receta, nos la aprendimos y empezamos a fabricar este producto. We learned from some friends who are Chinese. We took the recipe and started making this product. How did you make Chinese friends? Did you meet Chinese people here in Mexico or did someone travel to China? ¿Cómo hiciste amigos chinos que hacen muchos chinos aquí en México o alguien viajó a China? La verdad, este, viajamos a China, aprendimos la receta y la trajimos y la modificamos. We traveled to China, learned the recipe and brought it, modified it. That was actually a perfect translation. Este, aquí estamos en Barrio Chino, Dolores número 10. Eh, estamos aquí para servirles. Nuestra empresa se llama Mr. Pumping. Y más de 47 sabores más de... Más de 47 de... sabores de dulces y 10 de comida. Wow, hay que venir a probar más. Muchas gracias, un gusto sí, conocerlo. Gracias. Que vaya muy bien. Gracias. gracias. What I really love about this gadget is how small it is. It's smaller than an iPhone or any phone, really. And it, its weight is really, really light when you can carry it around your neck like with nothing. this really cool linear. And, you know, it's, it's awesome. You can stretch it out and use it in different <laughs> ways. I look forward to using it out next time we travel to Asia. Like, we haven't been to Japan. We haven't been to China or Korea. None of the neighborhoods. So we went to those neighborhoods. Um, and speaking of those neighborhoods here in Mexico City, we went through them so fast. We have to go back and, and explore them some more, like eat some more of the food. We had a lot of Mexican-Asian fusions, but there's so much that I want to try. If you all are interested in seeing a more in-depth video of any of those neighborhoods, let us know in the comments below. But anyways, if you're interested in grabbing one of these for yourselves, we're going to drop the link in the description and the pinned comment below. Honestly, this is like the gadget of the year. I'm really happy yeah. that we have one. I'm so excited to use it. And we made friends. <laughs> yeah. We made friends. It was just super cool. And uh, you know how, how cool that this thing connected us to so many different that people. That was nice. So. Thanks for joining us on today's adventure. If you made it this far, be sure to like and drop us a comment. And Fluent Talk has something they want to say to you. Se cuidan, se bañan y nos vemos hasta la próxima. They take care of themselves. Bathe and then until the next one. <laughs> Chao.